All right. Well, good morning and welcome to the April news conference. Uh, with me today, as uh, usual, is City Manager Steve Wade, and we have also a gentleman joining us today, Chief Randy Phillips with the Topeka Fire Department. He has some information we'd like to share and make sure the public is aware of it. Uh, so we'll have a few things to speak to and then also have uh, time for some questions afterwards. Um, I appreciate those who tune in and listen because I do get feedback out in the community that they uh, heard the announcements and heard those things that we discussed. Uh, there's a couple things I'd like to bring out. Uh, you know, we have a, uh, a diversity, equity, and inclusion director. And sometimes folks wonder, well, what's that person going to do? Well, he's been very, very busy uh, working in the community. Uh, and literally, he and I were shoulder to shoulder along with uh, my executive assistant, Jane Murray, and others, staff, uh, cleaning up uh, some of the campsites around town uh, in recognition of Earth Day. Uh, if you were able to see that piece that we uh, had on our uh, channel, I spoke and asked to the citizens to uh, help us keep the rest of the city clean. And we were doing those things specifically for the campsites, but it's an observation that I think a lot of people have said that uh, our city seems sometimes to have more trash than it needs, and that's just on the sidewalks and the streets because there's a habit that some people have that if I'm done with my can of Coke, I can just toss it out the window and leave it for somebody else to pick up. That builds up in a short amount of time and it sends the wrong message about how we feel about our city. So I'm gonna encourage people to do everything they can to take care of their homes, their property, their businesses, and show some respect for the rest of the citizens in helping to keep our city clean. So for the city staff and all those who uh, uh, took the time to observe Earth Day, I thank them. Uh, I'd like to also now speak about uh, uh, another thing the diversity equity uh, director did, and that is that he's working on a workshop for procurement, how to work, uh, win bids or how to work with the city of Topeka to get uh, bids. And he is conducting a workshop along with GTP, a Greater Topeka Partnership, that will be in Spanish because we recognize that there is a need to have that information available to all and to give some equity to the opportunities that might be there for them. And so that uh, is going to be taking place uh, at the Greater Topeka Partnership, I believe from, uh, let's see, uh, May 11th, I think is when that is. But you can check online and get the exact date uh, for that workshop. I uh, appreciate that effort on his part. Uh, he also has been joining me at a number of uh, speaking engagements so that I can uh, introduce him to even more people in the city of Topeka. I know he's been very busy with requests for uh, to speak at their organizations and I encourage uh, civic organizations, uh, uh, nonprofit organizations and others to uh, contact his office and visit with him uh, about their thoughts and ideas about what he's doing in the city and uh, put him on their agenda. I'd like to see him out there as much as possible. Uh, something I'd like to speak to uh, today, and I'll give, uh, let the city manager uh, put more detail to it. And he, uh, he had an item in his weekly newsletter, and I hope people read that newsletter. newsletter. Um, we spoke to it last month about how to find it. And there's good information there. It's well organized, it's put together. Uh, very easy to read, it's not long and lengthy, but it is informative and uh, I think it's important that uh, we maybe highlight some of those things that come out in his newsletter at a press conference. And so it, there is an idea or ideation program, I wanna make sure I pronounce it correctly, that the city manager is leading and uh, Gretchen Spiker uh, chose to highlight it in his newsletter and I think it's important to get some information for him about what that is because I asked what it was 
to make myself clear on it. City Manager? So, you know, Mr. Mayor, we, we, uh, along that same theme of community engagement, uh, that's really what's taking place here. So, uh, we've been working hard to grow this community. Uh, that's, that's a listed priority of the governing body. And so, as we're looking at strategies and tactics to make that happen, uh, we recognize that that has to be done in partnership with Global Plot folks. And so, uh, we've been involved with the process since about November. Uh, we've talked to dozens of individuals. Uh, we've talked to developers, we've talked to residents, gathering a bunch of information. So now we're at a point to where we're working on how do you, how do you tackle the problem of, uh, or the challenge of growing Topeka. And so we've conducted um, some workshops here recently uh, inviting the members of the community in to share ideas about how to make that happen. Uh, and it's been wonderful watching that because it's, it's all walks of life. Um, it's, it's a combination of, of folks in different businesses, different not-for-profits, uh, residents, bringing the community to the table so that this is uh, a community effort and not just the city. Mm -hmm. And so this ideation workshop that you're talking about is very much trying to get the, the city involved uh, with the community uh, to pull ideas together so that we can help grow this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good effort and I, I like the, the fact that there has been a, um, uh, an intentional effort to bring a lot of different eyes, eyes to, the, to the project so that you get a lot of those. Uh, and I asked you the question, uh, I know that citizens often ask, well, how do I get selected? How does that happen? So, so the great part about this one, uh, we intentionally invited folks that we don't normally hear from. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we specifically looked for individuals who are invested in this community, uh, invited them to the table, because we have, as you know, um, a group of folks that aren't shy about expressing opinions mm -hmm. and sharing their thoughts. Uh, and so we wanted to hear from, from some others. This workshop, uh, we went after some members of the population that um, represent all, all folks in Topeka. And it, it was a lot of fun to go through. Good. Well, thank you. Uh, and I would encourage people to get in contact with you if they Absolutely. have questions about it. Absolutely. Uh, if I can back up a little bit, um, I'm now able to read my own notes <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that I get the information correct. That. Uh, Spanish Vendor Workshop is going to be uh, April the 27th, so it's coming up very quickly, and it will be at Washburn Tech East, which is at 2014 Washington. So I hope and encourage people to attend. Uh, there'll be bilingual opportunities there. So it's April the 27th. I believe it starts at 7.30, so it's early. Have a light uh, breakfast there. Uh, there at Washburn Tech East, 2014 Southeast Washington. I'm glad it's being held there because I often encourage as much as I can for the use of that facility because I think it's a great extension from West Washburn University and I'm appreciative of them allowing us to conduct some of our workshops there. Uh, I'd like to now if I could uh, speak to a way to work program that we have that was also highlighted in the city manager's newsletter. This is something that, uh, that I know is close to the heart of uh, Councilwoman Ortiz. She's been working on this for years and I applaud her for her continued effort. They are, in her words, taking it to the next level, uh, trying to reach even more youth uh, I think the age range is what, 14 to 16? Yep. And, and uh, they will have an orientation uh, that they hope that will uh, bring both the interested youth and their uh, parent, guardian, uh, an adult who cares for them, have them come to the orientation so they can hear what the overall effort and program is. Uh, it's going to be this, uh, at two to, two, from 2 to 4 on April the 30th. And this Sunday. Uh, this Sunday, April the 30th from 2 to 4. And it'll be at Fellowship Highcrest, which is at 4 
55 Southeast Golf Park Boulevard. 455 Southeast Golf Park Boulevard. And um, again, it's from two to four. The effort is to really to try to introduce youth to the idea of how <clears throat> they want to get a job, what they have to do to prepare for the job, how they write a resume about themselves, how they conduct themselves in an interview, how to project confidence so that an, uh, an employer will uh, see the opportunity to give a young person a, a job for the summer. Uh, right now it's uh, short in numbers, uh, but they continue to try to work to expand the, the numbers that they can employ. I think one thing different this time around that most often uh, the jobs are within the city, but they uh, reached out, they meaning uh, Councilwoman Ortiz, and they have brought on other partners. So I believe Shawnee County is taking some of the youth and so is um, uh, not uh, Parks. Did, did Topeka Zoo is involved? Topeka Zoo as well. Uh, we have uh, Heights Atlas Chiropractic. Okay. And Boys and Girls Club, and then uh, yeah. Mary Rink. Yeah, so there are a number of partners now who are uh, providing opportunities for the youth in the city of Topeka. So if, if you know a, a person, a, a youth between 14 and 16, mm -hmm. uh, who's interested in trying to get a job for the summer, uh, get used to the idea of uh, working for an employer, receiving a paycheck, uh, learning how uh, they can be part of a team for a company. Uh, that might be their first step toward their goals in either education or in employment. So I would encourage you to really, really talk about this. Again, April 30th, this Sunday, 2 to 4 at Fellowship High Crest at 455 Southeast Golf Park Boulevard. Uh, and I want to thank Councilwoman Ortiz for all the work that she's done on this and uh, applaud her for her efforts and encourage every uh, city councilman to uh, ask their constituents to bring youth to the program. And the next thing I'd like to talk about, I'm gonna move this microphone, is I've invited uh, Chief Phillips to join us today. The Chief and I have uh, visited before about a program that uh, I think he's very proud of, and I, I uh, am very proud of him for implementing it implementing it and that is Camp Courage and that is a uh, an effort to try and reach out and bring more females into the profession of fire service and then he has a second effort that uh, I was uh, privileged to uh, visit with the, the team of the firefighters just this week that I'd like him to speak to so Chief if you talk about Camp Courage first and then on your other initiative. Yes, uh, thank you for having me this morning, Mayor. Um, so as the Mayor said, I, although I can't take credit personally for Camp Courage, uh, that, that credit goes to um, a couple of our female firefighters mm -hmm. who um, developed this program over the last uh, four or five years. Um, it is a, a summer camp, a week-long program uh, for girls aged 14 to 20. Um, it goes off this year, June 5th through 9th. Uh, we recently had our uh, application period, mm -hmm. which we were inundated uh, very positively That's with good. applications in a very short order of time. And we're actually expanding the camp this summer to include extra participants because of the response that we had during the application period. Um, this is uh, a camp that is put on by female firefighters from the Topeka Fire Department as well as other area departments who volunteer their time to come in to expose um, young females who may have interest in the fire service or curiosity about it to what it is. Um, it's classroom instruction. It is uh, hands-on uh, participation with some fire, actual firefighting skills. Um, and I, I will tell you, having witnessed firsthand um, some of the past camps, the transformation you see with some of the participants over that week is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the level of confidence, um, the level of camaraderie and teamwork that they develop um, is, is something uh, that's really a positive for 
not just the department and the, and the participants of the camp, but for the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. So it's something we're very proud of. And actually, one of the founding members, uh, Captain Rachel Hawkinson Penny, who recently retired, is actually still coming back to help uh, with camp this summer because she's just so invested and it means so much to her as well. Mm -hmm. so, so we're really looking forward to it. Um, we've already had some discussions with the city manager about next year, about maybe uh, ways we can even continue to grow uh, the program and, and to make sure that we're being uh, as inclusive as we can be and reaching as broad a base as we can uh, across the community for girls to participate. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, Captain Penny because I think that, that it's important uh, to note that uh, not only did she work well with that and, and has come back, uh, that uh, she's somebody I sought out and uh, she has agreed to serve on our Civil Service Commission. So she's continuing to be a leader for the firefighter profession. And so I'm appreciative that she's with us on that commission as well. Yeah, she's, uh, her and I actually hired on together in uh, 1995. So we've known each other for a long time. And she's somebody who I have a lot of respect for. And uh, I know that uh, she, she's very dedicated to both those efforts. Yeah, and I'm sorry, did, did you mention that the instructors are all female firefighters as well? And from, not, and from other departments as well? Yes, so uh, it, it's uh, all female firefighters, uh, females for firefighters from the city of Topeka, as well as some of the surrounding township departments. Um, and then uh, we also have had firefighters from Lawrence mm -hmm. who have come over and helped as well. That's good. Well, thank you for that. And then your other initiative is something else that I, I'd like to see in the department as well. Thank you. Uh, and it's one that I am very proud of. Um, this week is our second offering of what we call ODP, or Officer Development Program. It's an internally developed program uh, by staff led by Division Chief Chuck Gatewood. When um, I was appointed as chief right approximately 13 months ago, uh, I talked about it during my interview, and one of my uh, priorities was the development of our personnel, professional development of our personnel. It's not something that historically the department has always been the best with. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an effort by us uh, to work towards developing the future leaders of the department. And we felt like there was no better place to start than at the initial company officer level. So um, we did some internal surveying uh, across the entire department that helped us develop the curriculum as well as the instructor cadre. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, it's a week-long program. Uh, it's going on this week. Um, that will touch on a number of topics, including leadership traits, engine and truck company operations, um, reporting, uh, mm -hmm. computer reports, supervisor reports, how to handle communications, rules and regs, disciplinary procedures, um, and then ownership and responsibility. Um, that, that's a big key piece of this, is about taking on that leadership role as you develop and move into those, those higher ranks. Um, we've got close to 20 participants again this year. Um, these are individuals within the department who are signing up voluntarily. This is not a mandatory program that we're forcing individuals to participate in. And um, last year, as well as this year, we conducted each, at the end of each day, we conducted surveying with the participants and we received extremely good feedback. And one thing that really was um, eye-opening to us was we actually, at the end of last year's program, had participants asking for more. So it's something that we continue to work on and develop, but it's a, it's a great program for us. It's our own, what we would call subject matter experts within our department, um, teaching our own, teaching those future leaders and developing them. And I think it's just, it makes for a better product out on the streets for the community on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's something that we're extremely proud of. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that because I do think that that's something that uh, pe the people like to hear is that uh, all of our... Uh, service providers and all the professions that we have for the department are in a continual learning mode and trying to improve what they're doing and better serve the community. So I thank you for that program. I think it's important for us to let everyone know about it. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. And city manager, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, speak to? Mr. Mayor, I think the only other thing I might add is just a reminder, as we did last month, um, we are in orange mode season. That's, that's a good thing because it means progress. Uh, it means we're addressing uh, our road conditions. So please, as you're navigating the streets, be mindful of the workers, be mindful of the traffic around you. Please adhere to uh, the posted detours. Uh, 
we want everybody to stay safe. Okay. Thank you. Good caution. Um, that's all we have to present. Any questions? Got two for you today, Mayor. Mm -hmm. So uh, first off, Colorado Springs did the best to take a city council recently. So what was learned from that rescue mission, re rescue mission visit, and what takeaways and Im implementations is the city of Topeka looking to bring back to your state side? Okay. Well, I'll let city manager speak to it, and then I have some comments as well. Yeah, so I, I, there, there was a wealth of information. Uh, we looked at a, a shelter in Colorado Springs. We also looked at shelters in Denver, Colorado. Um, and, and right now, we're, we're unpacking that a little bit. We're trying to uh, digest a little bit of what we saw um, and see what lessons uh, we've learned that might be applicable to Topeka. So it's a little premature right now to uh, draw that line, but uh, it was a, it was a very impactful trip. Uh, for my part, I know that uh, there's some anticipation in the community uh, about a report that we may get or we will get from uh, a consultant, uh, and I think maybe the emphasis has been that well, once we get that report, we're going to do something. Well, we're not waiting for that report. And this trip that was planned by the city manager and others uh, is evidence of that, that uh, we're still moving forward to different solutions. So we're not waiting for a report to give us what we should do. Uh, we're very well of the challenges that we have here in Topeka. I was very interested in seeing in action what people have been talking about only by a, a written report or an article in a magazine or something online. Uh, that's all good information and should be uh, taken into account. But until you see it working, I think you really didn't get a feel for how that translates into real life. And what I'm looking for is those things that the city of Topeka has capacity to do and do them in a, in a way that doesn't overwhelm staff or is inconsiderate of the people we're trying to give some shelter to and assistance to. So we saw a lot of information. We saw a lot of what might be, uh, you might call real good examples, but they still have their struggles as well. So we want to make sure we, we learn from their wins and we l learn from those things that didn't work well. Mm -hmm. So as the city manager says, there's not, we're not at a point right now to say these are the next two, three, five, ten steps we're taking, but we are taking some steps. So I, I think it, this trip was uh, a real good use of time uh, with partners who will be working with the city on this program. What I see from the city, though, is they're going in clearing out where the camps used to be. They're clearing the brush out, 15th and Adams, over here up. Uh, 470 to Wanamaker, they're mowing down everything and clearing all the tents and everything out. So that's what I'm seeing the city accomplishing and other locations. So is that your way of handling the crisis here? So what you're talking about there um, really are private property and entities yeah. outside of the city. Uh, so the uh, the one specifically you mentioned to on Wanamaker uh, was done by the Kansas Department of Transportation. Um, and so you know, we're all trying to work together, but I, I would not say that that's the stated strategy. What is told to these people when we cleared out, I uh, say, the city over by the rescue mission when that was all cleared out? And so, again, the 15th and the Adams behind that shopping center, that was all mowed down, cleared out too. Couldn't speak specific to the 15th and Adams. Uh, what I can tell you is the city has um, posted policies. Uh, very, very specific procedures that we have to follow before we uh, clear out an encampment. So everybody's got rights, and it is absolutely our obligation to ensure that everybody's constitutional rights are followed. Um, and so um, now that the weather is warmer and we're not dealing with frost and bitter cold, uh, we'll see where that goes this summer. Another question for you this morning. The mm -hmm. Governor liquor law passage that was recent. Uh, what is the city of Topeka hoping to achieve with those new changes heading into the summer season? So I think you're referring to common consumption. 
Uh, common consumption is something that we lobbied for. Uh, we think it is a great um, activity, uh, as we've seen that in other communities. Uh, Mayor, you were on the trip to Fayetteville mm -hmm. last year. Uh, it was something that uh, provided some community spirit. It provided some camaraderie. Um, it brings folks into, um, in this particular case, we're probably looking at downtown. Uh, it's, an, it's an opportunity to have some fun. Uh, but do so safely. That's changing how well we're changing with that that you can do downtown that you could before. So right now, uh, for example, if you are uh, at an establishment, uh, you cannot carry a beverage from location to location. Uh, common consumption, once that's up and running, there are still procedures that we have to go through. There's licensing that we have not yet done. Uh, once all that takes place, if enacted, that would allow a person to take a beverage and go from site to site. Okay, right. no further questions. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it. Have a good day.